Hey, welcome to Virtual Sox Spring Break. I'm the radio voice of the White Sox, Len Casper, and today we're going to feature a look at the White Sox farm system, some present, some near-term future, maybe a long-term future questions as well. Great to have with us Assistant General Manager, Player Development, Chris Getz. Chris, how are you today? Doing great, Len. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm thinking about uh, sunny skies and uh, green grass. Also with us, Assistant General Manager, Jeremy Haber. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Len. Good to be here. So, guys, let's just start with an overview as spring training is uh, getting underway. Big league spring training. Chris, uh, what's the vibe right now in Arizona? Uh, you know, everyone's feeling pretty good. I think people are, are very happy to be out here, be around their teammates. I think you know, speak, you know, for Jeremy and I, it's just good to be around employees for the Chicago White Sox, along with those players. Um, you know, the the past year has been very, very difficult just because a lot of people have been disconnected from each other. I hadn't seen Jeremy in person for a while, so it was good to see him. But getting out of the field yesterday and interacting with, you know, whether it be coaches, players, um, and just watching the players interact with each other, and get some work in uh, was a breath of fresh air. And, you know, looking at last season and what's in front of us now, there's obviously a lot of optimism based on what we were able to accomplish last year. And, and now we're uh, yesterday was day one and working towards our goal for, for this season. Chris, by the way, congratulations on your new title. Uh, Jeremy, how about you? How, how do things feel today? Oh, it's, it's great, Len. I mean, it, it's always a privilege to, to show up to work at a, at a baseball stadium, never, never more so than what's going on in the world right now. Uh, and, and I think, you know, since the season ended in Oakland, uh, this group has been excited to get back here. Um, it, there's there's a sense of unfinished business and uh, getting started. And, um, you know, there's there's a lot of challenges uh, this year that we that we faced last year as well. But this group has uh, really responded, come in, uh, know they have work to do. And uh, it's fun to get started. This question is for both of you. Chris, you go first, and then, Jeremy, if, if you want to follow up, you can. Can you just talk about the big process here, you know, over the last uh, you know, four or five years and now looking ahead to 2021 and, and not really beyond that, right? This is, this, is the, this is the window. But the idea of procuring talent, developing talent to not only help this team win a World Series, but uh, in a few cases – uh, to be pieces to go out and acquire some uh, veteran uh, help for this ball club. It's it's a process that that requires you to be pretty flexible, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was fortunate to to get this position, you know, back in 2017 and, you know, kind of walked into the beginning of this process and Rick and Jeremy uh, amongst others you know, did a tremendous job in, in making some really important trades for, for this organization. And then through time, we're able to add some, some players through the draft. And, you know, we knew it was, it was going to be a, a, a bit of a, uh, there was going to be a lot of hard work ahead and we had to be patient. Um, and, you know, we were, we were slowly able to work towards, uh, you know, developing these guys into championship type players, whether it be the draft guys, some international players, and certainly those those players we were trade we, we traded for, um, and then slowly but surely they started graduating towards the major leagues. Um, was not easy. Didn't expect it to be when they 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 played their their first seasons, but the tremendous learning experience. And, and now you know we're starting to get a taste, and they're starting to realize how good they can be at the major league level. Um, we certainly saw that last year. And then going into the offseason here, able to, to add pieces to that core group that we were able to acquire and develop through time. So, um, you know, we feel like we're in a good position, a lot of work ahead. Um, but, you know, we've got uh, a great support system, uh, new staff, a lot of new faces uh, with this young group. And, you know, we're chomping at the bit. Uh, no doubt. I mean, one of the things we talked about early on, Len, was that uh, the increasing the, the the talent base and and establishing that long term window, we were going to have to use every avenue of player acquisition that that we had available to us, whether it was trade, whether it was the draft, whether it was international, uh, and and like Chris said, we're seeing that come together. Uh, and one of the the silver linings from last year was so many of the guys uh, got got pushed into battlefield promotions. Um, and, and you saw, uh, even quicker than I think we, we anticipated on the whole, 
uh, them, them rise to that challenge. Uh, it's never easy uh, to then turn around and, 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 and trade those guys uh, because they, they grew up with us. Um, but, but you're absolutely right. That is, that is part of the plan. Uh, we know that some of the guys, uh, that we develop over time, uh, when, when the time is right, we're going to, we're going to end up trading them for, for, for guys who are further along in their career. Jeremy, uh, you go first on this one. And then Chris Garrett crochet, um, if you couldn't, if you couldn't have written a better script. Um, I don't know how nervous or anxious you guys were, uh, in terms of a, a kid who's drafted and all of a sudden, boom, he's not only in the big leagues, but he's pitching for one of the best teams in the league, a postseason team. Uh, everybody had to adjust on the fly last year, but just kind of like the emotions, I guess, you guys had kind of watching that whole process play out with uh, your, your star prospect who uh, you had just drafted, Jeremy. Sure. Uh, you know, be- before I get to his major league debut, I do have to say, you know, our, our entire scouting staff uh, led by Mike Shirley deserve a, a, a tremendous amount of credit for, for identifying Garrett and, and having the courage to, to push him up the draft board. Um, this is a guy who, who uh, the summer between his sophomore and junior year really took a, a step up in, in what he could do on the field. Uh, and in very limited time, they saw it. Um, and we're not we're not uh, uh, pushed off by the fact that they had a limited sample to work with. Um, I think the the confidence lend to to even consider him uh, as a guy who could contribute at the big league level in his first pro season uh, started in Schaumburg uh, and the uh, the alt site and and Chris can speak to what they saw. Uh, but by the time you know, there's always there's always concern with a guy with a lack of a track record. But by the time you know we made that decision. Uh, we had had time with with Garrett, got to know him as a person, and uh, we were fully confident that he was ready to succeed at the big league level. Yeah, and, and just to, to add to that, I mean, Garrett, <clears throat> Garrett, um, you know, just sitting in the draft room and listening to our scouts talk about him, obviously a lot, watching a lot of video and gathering as much information as you can. You know, in hindsight, I feel very fortunate that we were able to get him at 11. Um But it was also, you know, the reason that we felt like the air was pointing up because, you know, the way he was used at Tennessee, certainly the lack of season last year. Um, When we finally got around him at the alternate site, still didn't know what to make of him. Like we didn't we didn't set out to prepare him to be on our major league club necessarily. Um, Let's just get him acclimated to the organization, uh, teammates, players, our process, all those types of things. you know, I'll never forget, you know, the first the first side session um, that he had. And, you know, everyone kind of gathers around. They, they, you know, you got the first rounder there, let alone he's six foot six and left handed. Um, and, you know, he throws the first pitch and everyone kind of looks at each other. I mean, you just you just don't see that too often or ever. Um, you know, there he's a guy that, you know, the first pitch, I think, was 98 miles an hour at a side session, typically. Guys are throwing five, six, seven miles an hour less in a side session. I'm sure he, the juices were flowing pretty good. Um, so you watch that, you know, you start having conversations with them. You know, how do you hold this pitch? What do you do with this? All those types of things. And it was it was very clear that, um, you know, there perhaps from an instruction standpoint, um, he was he was looking for guidance and, you know, and, and we didn't have to give him too much, just little tweaks along the way, whether it be on a long toss or, you know, grip it this way or focus on that. And he took to it so quickly. Um, and, you know, that that certainly stood out. And then as time went on, we just added a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, he finally faced some hitters. And, you know, I don't think anyone made contact, you know, the, the, the first, you know, the first couple, couple at bats. Um, but the thing about Garrett, um, very even tempered, um, you know, I, you're, you're looking at a guy that hadn't been to a major league game before, even as a fan. Uh, you know, there was a funny story when we were, we, we, we did some of our workouts at guaranteed rate field when the team was on the road and he, yeah, he, he was driving over there in a van with, with some coaches. And he, he simply said, I've never been in a stadium before. I've never pitched, certainly haven't pitched on a major league mound 
in an era where, you know, a lot of young kids go to these showcases and they've played at these stadiums, um, which just makes this story even better. And, you know, he, he just a fearless kid. And, um, you know, you fast forward to, to his debut and we're all anxious to watch him. And, and, you know, it was one of those, you know, I, I, I was at home. I stood off, off the couch, up off the couch and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Right. I mean, it, um, you know, so it was it was very rewarding to see, and he continues to to want to get better, and and now here we are, and and we're talking about him being on our major league club. It's very exciting for for so many people. I think uh, for fans who didn't hear this story, uh, I believe it goes. Mark Carlson asked James McCann, like, "Who's this kid? Does he belong?" And McCann said, "Tell me after the inning." <laughs> and uh, after the inning, he's, "Yeah, I think he belongs." <laughs> it was pretty obvious right off the bat. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you on this one for both of you again. Uh, the value of spring training for guys who will probably not be on the club to start the year, not only getting that veteran uh, relationship that they build, you know, pitchers with pitchers, position players with position players. Chris, maybe you can speak to your experience as a young player, just the value of facing big league pitchers. Uh, in this environment. Everyone says spring training doesn't matter, but I think it matters a lot, maybe more for the guys who will start the year in the minor leagues. Yeah, no, I, I, I can, I, you're right in the sense of um, how important it is for young players to get that, you know, kind of that major league experience. You grow up um, and the major leagues, it is such, it's on such a pedestal. Um, you know, it's, it's like a fantasy and, all of a sudden you're in the clubhouse and you're in the weight room and you're eating with, you know, these major league guys, guys that you watched on TV and guys that, you know, have been playing years uh, in the major league. Some have been in the world series or one world series. It's, it can be very overwhelming uh, as a young player. So to kind of get that out of your system uh, and, and just start to get comfortable uh, with being around those guys certainly helps that, that confidence. And then you, you know, you, you eventually, you start getting into your drill work and, and you look around and you're like, you know what? I can do this. You know, they're, they're just like, just like me. They're they obviously perhaps just more experienced. Um, and then you face your, you know, your first opponent, your first major league pitcher. And you know, what? Oh, that, that fastball kind of looks like fastballs I've seen before, or that swing as a pitcher, like, Oh, I've, I, I, you know, so-and-so swung and missed at my fastball or my breaking ball. Like I can do this, this realization that you, that, that you belong at this level. Um, so, you know, regardless of whether you're ma making the team or not, you know, eventually if that time comes for that debut, you walk into the clubhouse, you talk to a Tony La Russa or a Yasmani Grandal, and it's, you know, that you're just a little bit more comfortable, which is really important just for that transition to becoming a major league player. No, no doubt. And, and Len, you know, it's, we of course will have an opening day roster of 26, uh, but it's a long season and we're going to, we'll, we'll start with those guys, but we'll have 15 to 20 guys uh, who are going to help us try to compete for a championship and anything that we can do to make that transition seamless uh, because we never know the conditions that we're going to be dropping a guy into. It might be a bench role. It might be a starting role. If a guy goes down due to injury, uh, and, and spring training is a big step, like Chris was talking about, to, to acclimate uh, to what's expected of you and, and to be ready to perform uh, when you're called upon. Jeremy, the challenges of last year with an alternate site and no minor league season and the fact that you're going to have a somewhat normal uh, minor league season with a lot of realignment and all that stuff. Uh, what, what's the big challenge? And look, every 30 all 30 major league organizations have to deal with this but the idea of a, of a minor league season that was lost last year do you have to be a little careful with some guys particularly the pitchers oh absolutely and and you know that's a conversation that that chris and i and many others that started before even last season ended uh in terms of preparing guys um who were either at the alt site or weren't at the alt site um, and this has been a, a com ongoing conversation all off season. Uh, I, I can't uh, speak enough to what our high performance group uh, has done uh, to, to to dig in and, and uh, you know tracking every side session, not just gameplay, um, because it's it's something that's top of mind about 
making sure that this this layoff and and different competitive environment doesn't affect player health. Uh, Chris, we don't have a lot of time. This just flies by every time we do this. But um, we talked to Rick Hahn about a couple of names of maybe guys who are uh, not the big names in camp. Um, he's kind of rooting for and kind of to, to, to look at. I'll just mention those two, and you can throw other names out there. We mentioned Sheets and Berger. And in Jake's case, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing story, and everyone's pulling so hard for him. And as Rick said, not only are you pulling for the person, but he's a really good baseball player. Chris, can you talk about his odyssey and, and kind of where he is right now? Sure. It's a, you know, going back a couple of years ago when he had that injury and, you know, an Achilles injury is, uh, you know, it's, it's certainly a challenging one uh, without question. Then he had another setback and re-injured that Achilles and has not been easy. Uh, for him, it, it you know there there were times where we just didn't know where where this was going to end up. I mean, there were some some really emotional moments for for Jake, um, and many conversations with him, and you know just kind of a testament to his character. The the reason why we liked him in the first first place was the makeup and the determination, and you know he's got a personality that's very likable, so it makes it even easier to root for for guys like that. Um, but, you know, he stayed the course. Um, you know, like I said, it certainly wasn't easy. Now, you know, last year when I got a phone call that, you know, he wanted to, to participate in a local league, um, it, 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 was a, it was a very um, – it was an interesting phone call. For one, the, the name of the league, it's a, called like the Car Shield something league um, locally in, in St. Louis where, where he's from. But he wanted to participate. I thought that was – that was music to my ears that he wanted to get at bats and get out there. That meant that he felt really good about his, his, his Achilles, his legs. Um, we saw him briefly before he participated in that league, thought he looked really good. Not only the conversations were good, but physically he was in a good place. He goes and gets some at bats there. Um, you know, we felt like that was the best course for him than, than perhaps get him the alternate site um, just to play baseball games, uh, eventually get him to the alternate site and, you know, continue to work. And, you know, you just, you don't see the hesitation. You don't see it in his gait, um, the way he was rounding the bases and taking ground balls. Um, his excitement to play baseball on a daily basis um, was fantastic. I mean, everyone felt it. He felt it. Um, and we're continuing to build on that. Um, we were able to get him in instructional league as well, had a tremendous off season. And here we are in spring training. He's back in the mix. Um, for him, it's about just getting at bats, um, you know, getting innings in the field. And, and uh, we hope to, to get him at an affiliate this year and start building up that workload. So uh, really happy for Jake. I mean, he, what he's overcome, now, baseball certainly presents a lot of different challenges. Just the game in itself is, is, can be very difficult. But now that he's overcome something like that, I feel like that's going to bode well for him. And then Gavin Sheets, like, like you mentioned, um, He's a guy that also has an excellent makeup. Uh, you know, he grew up around the game. His dad played in the major leagues. He's got a real presence about him. He's got leadership qualities. You know, his 2019 in Birmingham was solid. Um, his second half was very good, starting to hit for more power. Uh, he's got contact ability, ability to just zone awareness. Um, and, you know, look forward to, to continue to build on that 19 he went to instructional league and, and hopefully at Charlotte, he gets some at bats there and is, is uh, shortly knocking on the door um, shortly thereafter. Uh, we don't have much time here again, but uh, Jeremy, last thing for you. And look, uh, got to mention Andrew Vaughn, obviously the sky's the limit for him and he should be a big part of this thing this year. But w one area I'd like to hit on before we end the call is, you know, the non-roster group. And I'm not talking prospects who have, come up and matriculated through the system. I'm talking about uh, the Wrights and the Tom Shaws and the Beckhams, guys who, Sadzik, guys who've had big league time uh, previously uh, or pitched uh, in indie ball or have had nine years in the minors with five different organizations or pitched in Korea. Uh, there are going to be a, a, a couple of those guys who – might play five games with the White Sox and help you win a couple of ball games and become part of a championship uh, team. Uh, we tend to overlook those types of players, but invariably every organization ends up with one or two of those guys really helping. 
Yeah, Len, that's something we 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 start right after the World Series, uh, trying to have conversations with players and agents. Uh, you know, just like Major League Free Agency, uh, at a certain point, guys have Minor League Free Agency and get to pick their club. Uh, and and that's a group effort uh, to bring them in. Uh, over the years, uh, we've had guys like uh, Swarzak and Albers make the team uh, as non-roster invites and uh, play really meaningful roles. Um, this year, this year's no different. Uh, it's it's one of those paths to bring guys in, uh, just like you mentioned. Uh, this year is definitely pitching heavy uh, in terms of our focus on that side, um, because as as we all know, we can never have too much. Um, and there's some exciting pieces in there. And and this early in spring, we we get our first look at uh, at where those guys are at and and, and how they can fit in. Uh, and guys like Ethan Katz and his staff can can start to work with them and 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 uh, do what we can to get the most out of them. By the way, for uh, White Sox fans, it's Tim Beckham, not Gordon. Uh, <laughs> so just to make that clarification. And one other note about watching spring training baseball: it's great to see Jose Abreu get his bats early. But my favorite part of those games actually is the seventh, eighth, and ninth when we get to see. Uh, some of these kids and and part of the future of the White Sox, uh, in some cases, get their first ever big league spring training inning or plate appearance. Chris Getz, Jeremy Haber, thank you guys so much, and uh, let's have a great 2021. Thanks, Len. Appreciate it, Len. See you soon.